Like, dude, watching some guy shred for 45 seconds straight, do like 13 tricks in a row that are all like professional level, to mm -hmm. me is way harder than some guy that's just like really, really good at skating the big section. Mm. Like he's got, he's got four good tricks for the big section every try. How's that? How, you're not, I don't know. I just, I, no, yeah, I don't think they're like judging shit. It's just like, like we already know who's going to win if he lands his trick. And if you watch any of the other contests, it's you're watching the same thing just fucking in Tokyo. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're not doing something new. It's not like they, they should have to do different shit at every stop. That would be dope. Welcome to another episode of the Levity Flowcast. Today we sit down with Brandon McConnell of One Up Skate Shop. So sit back, relax, and flowcast. So with um, what you were saying earlier about like <coughs> skateboarding being like a graph, you know, mm -hmm. the peaks and whatnot um, for the trend, what do you think right now with this being the first year that skateboarding was in the Olympics? Um, so, I mean, you'll see a little boost because of that. Um, hopefully it's going to be a fun boost. Now, like, there's a lot of girls getting into skateboarding, but there really has been for the last couple of years anyways. Yeah. Um, but I... We always have what we call um, like skate skate parents, like skate coach parents and shit. And they're like, <laughs> so like, you know, they just like, they take their kids to the park and they like force yeah. them to do certain things mm. instead of like just letting them oh, express themselves. Trash. Like they want them to be good because it's like a meal ticket. It's like making your kid go out and shoot a thousand free throws before he yeah. comes home. Yeah. So it's a, it's a different aspect to it. But we did have a few kids or parents come in. Uh, the Monday after the first uh, Olympics showing or whatever for uh, skateboarding and being like, yeah, we were watching the Olympics. And my daughter was like, yeah, that looks cool. And that's all it takes, you know. So that's cool, man. And that's but, cool. She could be like a lifetime skater <clears throat> now. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the biggest increase for skating and why everybody's getting into it is because um, I don't want to say everybody's self-absorbed, but their Instagram is so much of a part of who they are. Mm. So try to go set your phone up when you play baseball during your practice and your coach is going to fucking chuck it until you run a lap, mm. right? You can suck at skating. You can be the best at skating. You can be any level in skating. You can go fucking set your phone up, film it, and show everybody what you did today. You know what I mean? Mm. And, and for me, I, I, I call it with some people, I call it scrolling through the bullshit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just because like... I. I, I don't I wouldn't really have social media if it wasn't for the business. So I'm literally yeah. just like making sure I'm paying attention to everything. Mm -hmm. So when you have X amount of people you follow and you watch like people do the exact same stuff like all the time mm -hmm. on a different obstacle or whatever, like I'm like, I, I wish I could have a filter. <laughs> Not that I don't ever want to see it, but like every day I have to check and like it's how yeah. I keep it's how I keep up with other brands. Like when they're dropping things, when they're turning people pro, like when they're having events and stuff like that. When the other shops are having events or other kids for other shops are having events, because I feel it's, even if it has nothing to do with my shop, it's very important for me to still share that information. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, Would you say, is there a relationship between like skating and BMX? Like if you, like if a kid with a BMX bike came into the shop, would you let him ride? Would other skaters like be pissed? Oh, I mean, if I knew him. Just because, I mean, so basically if, if I had a big ass park, yeah. that it would make sense i'd be like yeah go ahead but like one bike is probably the most you could fit in there and they're just there's not really a lot of bike jumps or anything mm. um but i mean i don't see it's not like the 90s or like the early 2000s where it was like you know, fuck anything that's not skating Yo, like yeah. sharks in the jets yeah some crazy shit like the only reason uh the whole stigma thing happened where like skaters were like buck rollerbladers or whatever mm. was because basically the uh the inline vert skaters at X Games started getting more uh, recognition, and the skaters wow. just put an end to that shit real quick. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? They were like, I mean, shit. They like, like they were just came out with the term fruit booter, and that was that was all it took. It was over. I mean, it seems like, and you could explain better the history. Like skating was kind of like first, like yeah. as far as an extreme sport. Well, anyway. the so the thing is, is just like visually, for the X Games, right? You are trying to get people to watch that don't do those things yeah mm. so visually rollerblading was really easy for people to digest mm -hmm. and it looks crazier they're able to jump high like they're able to go higher off the ramps they're spinning more you know what i mean they're like that looks harder than the other thing well i'm like they're fucking attached to their feet yeah you know what i mean <laughs> and if you don't skate flipping my board a thousand different ways can kind of look the same to you you know what i mean yeah. you don't understand why it's harder to do this trick and spin this way it's not gonna make any sense to you yeah as to where like you know rollerblading is easy or for them to understand i guess um but yeah i mean bmx i don't think there's see it's weird I, there's not a big scene for everything else anymore either like i know they're out there but mm -hmm. like 
I know one dude that BMX is and I let him ride whenever he comes down and he like comes to all my music shows we throw at the shop and all that stuff. So it's nice. like he actually has involvement in the shop mm-hmm. outside of just, hey, I'm a guy with a bike. Let me ride. Because if you're probably just a guy with a bike and I don't know you, I probably wouldn't let you ride <laughs> unless nobody was in there because I, I don't really care that much. It's just like you want to you want to give people like the space for what I created it for, you know? Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, I mean, I was more so just wondering, like, if there really even still is, like, any type of stigma or, like, beef. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there is in certain areas. I'm sure there's, like, some town where, like, every time you fucking go to a park and, and it's fucking Saturday and it's nice out and there's, like, 19 fucking guys riding their bike, you're a little pissed because it's just, they take up a lot of room. I've seen that, uh, like, videos in, like, Venice Beach. There's, like, uh, certain yeah. parks that, like, yeah, uh, yeah. you can't ride a fucking bike. It's yeah. only for skaters. Yeah, I mean, but you'll get that a lot of other places. Um, I just... I just don't think there's enough people out here doing it. Like the only time I ever see a lot of BMXers here, they're actually from Ohio. Word. And the stuck in Ohio things like a big movement for like action sports or whatever. So. Okay. But. Does um, I know he's like kind of like an old figure, but I was thinking like you brought up X Games when I was young. My dad took me to like Tony Hawk's Boom Boom Hawk Jam. Okay. Which I thought was fucking sick as a kid. There was like <laughs> motocross going on too. Wait, does he like still play a role for like? kids today and did he influence you tell me yeah uh not really i mean i i had his like trick tips because again i was like that was my mindset it was like i need By the i need to be taught how to do this right but like that's um i mean he he definitely still has a huge role in uh what he does with skateboarding and everything he still skates too like he put out a part it was called 50 at 50 and he turned 50 and he did 50 tricks on the vert ramp i mean he's still Jesus. now doing mbds on vert ramp things like just tri- what is it that and be, yeah. uh, uh, never been done oh okay okay yeah a- abds are a big no-no in filming i guess i don't know who you are <laughs> which is uh which is the already been done <laughs> yeah i figured i mean shit he um i know he's, he still skates yeah he had a, a sick episode with with joe rogan just talking about like he has to stretch a lot more and all these things know. now just to maintain um yeah it's funny because like so skating has evolved so much beyond like what he was doing when he was peaking mm-hmm. but it's just it's funny to watch because it's where i get into that whole like the skate parent thing is like when tony did the 900 during a contest like he freaks out he just stops doing his run like he does like he just freaks out the whole mm. the whole stadium gets up and goes crazy right this one dude does a 1080 for the first time in contest run fucking head down doesn't even he's not even stoked mm. he's just like i've done it a thousand times finally fucking did it in a contest like it's like nothing to him he's like i'm now i'm gonna do it every time i go to a contest you know, you know what i mean he's like tricking my bag we have to get these checks like it's just it's like a different yeah that's that's thing, trash you know? but i mean i get like like the thing about like the whole like argument for like the olympics even is like there's no real way to gauge skateboarding i feel fairly mm. you know what i mean because like for them to say well then we go to style i'm like well fucking depends on whose style you like just because you guys like your shit to look robotic, and I, I hate that. Like, I was yeah. like, that's like everybody was like a big P Rod fan when they were young. I mean, I never like hated the dude or anything. I mm-hmm. just like he, his skating never got me stoked compared to dudes that had like a little flair, like the guys that like probably weren't gonna land it, but they just tried it a thousand times till I got one. Oh, man, I'm gonna do that all night. It's okay. Bibbidi bobbidi boop. <laughs> no, it's like uh, <laughs> like the the goat argument in like hip hop. It's like there's yeah. no greatest of all time. Yeah. Like there are a ton of greats, and yeah. everybody can do something different. Like you know, everybody loves Eminem because he literally read the dictionary, and it's evident when he rhymes, and he's so technical. Meanwhile, yeah, yeah. like DMX and Tupac is like raw feeling. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then like I think like it, if you look like Kanye, like. The craziest things I think Kanye he does. Here. Oh, we're going to. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just really respect what he did with how he was like the first one to put the vocals into the the samples and shit like that. The way he did it, hmm. you know what I mean. So like, but that's just like you can look though back to like, you know, the old, uh, the old like '80s hip hop days. Like those dudes were mixing all their own shit. So how do you really gauge something that happens now? Yeah. Compared to back then when they were actually inventing something, and now you're just like fucking we building can, on it. We can like do a thousand voices on our phones so with not being able in your opinion to like judge skating fairly since like the olympics is kind of like more corporate yeah um did you feel like the same way about something like the street league oh so that's the thing is like so if you were watching the olympics and you've watched any of the street leagues or the uh they use the do tour as the qualifiers for the olympics Mm -hmm. you're watching these guys it's oh my god uh (laughs) it's put your hands down (laughs) Dude, that's, I'm just in the fucking. I'm yeah. in the tank again. I don't know what to do. I'm like, like Ricky Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> um, Good movie. 
Oh man. But um, yeah, so like if you watch any of those, it's the same dudes doing the same tricks mm -hmm. every time. And so my thought process is like, damn, did they just like go out and practice those fucking tricks all the time? Or do they mm -hmm. actually still learn things? Like, and I'm sure they do. They're fucking professionals. They're probably amazing. But it's like, how good do you have to be at that one specific trick to dial it down enough to do it every fucking try in a contest setting, right? Yeah. So now you're just judging whether that guy's chosen trick and this guy's chosen trick is better than the other. You know what I mean? That's, mm, that's just, yeah. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me. Like, I think they should have had to fucking do like highest jumps and longest, like they should have had to race each other down a fucking mountain, like snowboarding or something oh, like that would have been cool. That'd be cool. Yeah. They, they did an event. I forget who threw it, but there was actually like a downhill skate park event one time. And it was like, they just, they drop in on this hill and they just had like all these ramps and rails and shit. And that was sick. That's what they should have had to do. They should have had to do, you do it for best time and trick selection like yeah and the thing is also is like they didn't so they had runs in skateboarding right mm -hmm. uh if you watch like figure skating or the gymnastics runs or any of that shit right they or like even the people that do the swim dives and shit they turn in what they're gonna do right and they already have a set amount of points that you can get and then there's ways that you fall from that like you know what i mean mm -hmm. if you do it perfect you get that amount of points and there's ways that you just get like penalties or whatever and points taken off they didn't do that with skating you, you didn't have to turn in your run. You could have, you could like just land weird and go to this thing and like, Oh, I'm just going to do a trick on this thing now. What the, how the fuck? That's not fair. It's not, it's not equal yeah. to like, you're going to call us an Olympic sport, man. Do it right. Make me feel like it's an Olympic sport. You know what I mean? Should have to jump high. <laughs> yeah, man. You're all about the jumps. <laughs> well it's year one so they have a lot of room yeah. to grow hopefully they, they just use the SLS format. And I mean, that thing's bullshit too. Cause they do it where like you get seven, options or um availabilities to get a score right mm -hmm. you get two full runs which are like i think it's 45 seconds right and then you get five best tricks and then you get to keep um i think it's the best four mm. right so you can suck at actually being good at the runs like dude watching some guy shred for 45 seconds straight do like 13 tricks in a row that are all like professional level mm -hmm. to me is way harder than some guy that's just like really, really good at skating the big section. Mm. Like he's got, he's got four good tricks for the big section every try. How's that? How, you're not, I don't know. I just, I don't, no, yeah, I don't think they're like judging shit. It's just like, like we already know who's going to win if he lands his trick. And if you watch any of the other contests, it's you're watching the same thing just fucking in Tokyo. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're not doing something new. It's not like they, they should have to do different shit at every stop. That would be dope. I wanna relax, relax, put my mind at ease Good friends and good vibes, now that's all I need When life hurts, come down and flow to levity Let your problems wash away into serenity, whoa